What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and today I'm going to be taking a look at the In The Moment banner which is a ninja seasonal banner featuring Duo Lin, Ninja Zihark, Ninja Levitain and also Ninja Navar. So I'm going to be reviewing these units and also going to be giving you guys builds for them. So that's it, I hope you guys do enjoy and let us begin. Duo Lin is a colorless dagger flying unit and that is still pretty unique in my opinion we don't really have too many units in that category and she also has a dual skill and tailwind shuriken as her preferred weapon making her further unique so this is a special accelerating brave dagger essentially and the minus one special cooldown from this weapon is extremely powerful along with the fact that it's a brave dagger so basically if they run something like moonbo or ruptured sky and they can trigger that special on their brave hit and that's pretty nice for damage output so this dagger is pretty much like the other weapons from this seasonal banner. It does give you plus 4 speed at the cost of reducing your defense and resistance by 4. And it's pretty nice for quad attacking. And uh, Duo Lin is extremely fast with that base 42 speed. So definitely a pretty nice weapon. And as it is, they don't have much defense to begin with. So the defense reduction isn't really that big of a deal. She does come with a dual skill which is extremely powerful because it's basically granting her another action. It's basically a self dance if they've entered combat during that same turn and that is extremely powerful because if you take out one unit you could just self dance and then take out the next unit and if you're in the wings of mercy range then another dancer can teleport and you get a third kill. So that's a very powerful thing and self dance can be really good in a lot of game modes like arena and arena assault as well as ether raids. So this duo skill is really amazing on already such a powerful unit that has got min max offenses with that 38 base attack with a brave slaying weapon and a really nice base speed of 42. Not only this duo skill is really good but it increases their BST as if it were 190 BST in Colosseum game modes. So that is just absolutely absurd. This is the first time we have got any kind of dual skill built into a duo unit that increases their score to 190 BST. So she's pretty much the highest scoring unit in the game when it comes to arena along with Brave Edelgard I believe. So with a 300 slot A and slot C skill she can basically have the same score as duo Lin. She does come with some nice fodder in Suspiro 3 and speed defense range. So if you fodder off in a Sala for Suspiro 2 then you could inherit both Swiss Barrow 3 and Speed Defense Rain at the same time which is really really amazing when it comes to her fodder potential. As for her build, she already comes with a pretty nice uh, base kit. You just have to replace that slot B. That shield skill isn't really all that good. You could run Desperation of course because she is a quad attacking unit and she doesn't have much bulk so Desperation is pretty much her best slot B option. So you could run Swiss Barrow and the Sacred Seal as well and Moonbo is quite fine honestly because it does trigger on her Brave hit. And she could actually be used in Aether Raid's defense as a enabler for Duo Hindrance structure. So Duo Hindrance in Aether Raid's defense only works if you have a dual unit on your defense team. And Duo Lin is actually a pretty powerful unit. And because she's a flying unit, she can have these shenanigans like Ground Orders, Aerobatics. So all of those things can be done along with Wings of Mercy. And she can actually be pretty powerful with that Brave Dagger that has got the minus one special cooldown. So you could run her with a cheap build or if you want to invest more then you could go with an impact skill because that could definitely make her even more annoying. Now of course if few of these mad lads decide to plus and merge a duo Lin then you could probably run a build like this for her in arena. So she does have 758 score in arena because of that dual skill built into her duo effect which is absolutely absurd. And uh, sturdy impact again is going to be helping you with uh, those distant counter armor units who do have a lot of attack. And Duo Lin does not have best of bulk so that definitely helps her. And Mystic Boost can basically help her be healthy because we are not running a healing special. We are instead running Ruptured Sky which does trigger on the second hit of her brave attack because it becomes a one turn special. Now she is pretty unique in Aether Raids as well because of the fact that she's got a Super Bane in HP. That is actually a pretty amazing thing because HP Super Bane basically means that she can function as a Lin Force unit. Now Lin Force is basically a version of Air Force which is a strategy used in Aether Raids which combines the usage of Fury and Disarm Trap on air and with the recall damage of Lithia Berg and Fury she can fall into the Wings of Mercy range for her allies to swoop in and Gale Force the entire team. So it's a really really nice way of initiating Gale Force on an opponent's team. And Lin can basically do that and in some situations even do it better than air but the only problem is that uh, it is going to be taking too much resources honestly to have the optimal build. 
So the easiest way to use this is have Fury 4 as their slot A and have a trade fruit used on her or if you're lucky enough to pull plus attack minus HP, that is pretty much the perfect IV spread for this kind of build. So after 3 combat she does enter the Wings of Mercy range. The first combat she attacks the unit then she uses the self dance and then you could use another dancer to dancer so after 3 combats it is going to be uh, a pretty nice way of initiating guild force against this team. Of course it does take dance. Um, but if you want to go the expensive and more consistent route, then I would say that Pumpkin, a box, is probably better. Because she can just use the self-dance and after two combat she's going to be entering the uh, Wings of Mercy range. But the team like this basically, so she takes 14 damage uh, from Fury 4 and Pumpkin, a box. And she does have the self-dance, so she doesn't even need a dancer to dance her up and follow up. She can just use that herself. And once she is in the Wings of Mercy range, she could have these units teleport to her like a Gale Forcer, and even Altina can work as a Gale Forcer potentially. So this type of thing can be used in the Astro Season. Air is of course present in the Light Season, so this could be a strategy for Astro Season, but it's definitely really, really expensive. And it does have its own drawbacks. The main thing is that Duo Hindrance just completely stops the self dance from happening, and also the fact that we have got Duma who can destroy a bolt tower. And Air Force strategy in Light Season heavily depends on Bolt Tower going off. So you just have to work around that or just use this as a counter pick, I guess. But this is definitely a pretty strong option and can be quite fun, actually. Ninja Levitane is an Axe Flyer with a striking similarity to Altina, not only because of her stat spread, but also because of her preferred weapon. So Twin Star Axe is a dual phase brave weapon that also has a blade tome effect essentially, but it's a half blade tome. So for example, if you have given her Fortify Flyer's buff, instead of having the 12 added into her attack, she's only going to be having half of that, which is 6 added into her attack. So it's not a full blade tome, only ha the half effect of that, but still it's really strong for a unit like her with a dual phase brave weapon. And she also comes with attack defense strain. This is a really important skill for a lot of flyers that are tanky flyers. Someone like Ashnard would really really love this skill. So she does make for a really good fodder as well because of that skill. And her stat spread is really min max with extremely high base attack of 42. On top of having an attack super boon because why not? This is 2020. And also she has got pretty amazing defense and resistance. So very min max unit can be a fantastic unit in both phases, very powerful, and also has the blade effect. The only thing lacking is that she comes with Distant Ward, which is basically an inferior version of Distant Counter in my opinion, because she does have the defense to take on bow units and dagger units, but she's going to be a sitting duck against them with Distant Ward. So Distant Counter is just much better, honestly, and uh, I would have preferred if she came with that, but I guess that would have been too good for a fodder, so they just gave her Distant Ward. Uh, but you could always replace that if you want to invest more into her. So definitely a pretty unique unit in a class that doesn't have much competition. For her build, they are pretty basic. She already comes with Vantage and Distant Ward, so that could be run with Bonfire as her special. And you definitely want to use something like Fierce Stance, which can give her more attack. And uh, as I said, if you want to invest more into her, then Distant Counter is absolutely the better option uh, for Slot A compared to Distant Ward. So that could be done along with a Brazen skill. And you could also use Heavy Blade and Glimmer so that she can always trigger Glimmer on her second attack by charging it up first with Heavy Blade. So that can also allow you to have better damage output when you Vantage. Ninja Seahark is a Sword Infantry unit on this banner who comes with Ninja Katana, which is basically the same weapon as a lot of these units on this banner, which is giving him more speed at the cost of defense and resistance and can have the Brave effect in the player phase. So it's really nice for quad attacking and someone like Seahark already has such a high base speed of 42. Also having a super boon in that does make it even better for him when it comes to quad attacking. And overall his stat distribution is really good. He does have workable bulk as well as pretty nice HP and offenses. He does have speed defense cap as his skill on 4 star. This is a pretty decent buffing option but uh, hopefully you could see like attack. Uh, speed gap or defense res gap because those skills are easier to use in my opinion for a specific target 
Being a sword infantry unit is always going to be really competitive in Fey because even though he does have the same speed as Fallen Ike, he doesn't have Chaos Ragnar or Mayhem Ether, which he has got, which helps him make much much better unit. And he can just face competition from these kinds of very fast sword infantry units who might not have the updated BST like he has got, but they have got incredibly powerful preferred weapon, which in my opinion kind of compensate for that fact. So not having a preferred weapon can definitely hurt Zhark. But the good thing about Zhark is that he is much easier to plus and merge compared to those units because of being a four star focus unit. So that is a thing which he has got for him right now. As for the cost of plus and merging him, if you're a Zhark fan, then about like 500 orbs is gonna be enough most of the time to plus and merge him because he's a four star focus unit. And this is pretty much the best time to go for plus and merging him because uh, when he returns on a double special banner, the odds are definitely much worse when it comes to pulling the four star focus units because the rate is shared among the four star focuses as well. So this is pretty much the best time if you wanna plus and merge him. And let's go over some of his builds. So because pulling him is going to be easy, you could definitely run some budget builds if you just get a one copy of him. And Fury Desperation is going to be the good old budget build for him because that does help him with the quad attacking as well as being in the Desperation range. He can just fire off like four uh, hits with his Ninja Katana, so that is really nice. You could also use uh, a budget Gale Force build with Flashing Blade. And if you have a plus speed IV, that helps you a lot. Fire Sweep Sword is also a budget option that could be used and basically this can be a pretty nice thing for something like Arena Assault where you could just poke these units with your Fire Sweep Pits and eventually weaken them and just take them out. So that is also possible. If you want to invest heavily into him then we definitely have some plus and builds here. So Carrot Cudgel in my opinion is a really good weapon for him and this Blade of Unity build is basically the best build that you could go for Zhark. Uh, that can work in both phases and uh, that can make use of his incredibly high speed and the speed super boon by utilizing a damage reduction skill like close call, spurn or repel and he can be extremely powerful with this kind of build especially because he does have some pretty nice bulk and really good speed to abuse the damage reduction. You could also go all out with the quad attacking build by having Susparo 3 and Fire Sweep Sword build can also be used expensively by utilizing time pulse and lot speed defense. He can be used with Sling Edge as well with a more consistent Gale Force basically with having Flashing Blade 4 with Sling Edge and uh, that just makes Gale Force a 4 turn special. And because he can reach 180 BST with the Speed Super Boon, he can definitely be used in Arena as well as a score bot and he can be a very powerful unit right there facing a lot of these uh, annoying green units but units like Legendary Dimitri and uh, Legendary Krom are gonna be so annoying for him in the water season. So you could run him with just the 300 SP skills basically for having max scoring and uh, he will need a 300 SP slot skill to score max in arena because he doesn't have a preferred weapon. And he can also be used in Astra Season actually as a tank uh, because red color is pretty nice matchup wise against Thrasir and uh, he can have really good bulk and he's extremely fast. So null follow up or a damage reduction skill is going to be really really good right there. Ninja Navar is a Lance Infantry this time around with 176 BST. Unfortunately for Ninja Navar, he definitely has a lot of competition because we just got Legendary Dimitri who also has pretty similar stat spread to his. Legendary Dimitri has got Atrocity and Arid Bar which is such a busted weapon and skill. So those two things make him extremely powerful and Navar right here is not even a 4 star focused like Zhark. So he's a 5 star lock seasonal unit without any kind of preferred weapon which can definitely make it pretty tough to invest into him. He does come with Ninja Yari Plus which does help him with quad attacking and he has got a pretty similar stat spread to Zhark basically. They just have the same stat spread so you can run the same builds which you ran on Zhark but of course getting merges on Navar is going to be much tougher. But he does come with better fodder though so you could inherit Flashing Blade 4 and Loud Speed Defense at the same time if you fodder off a Summer Ilgar for Flashing Blade 3 so he does make for really good fodder potential as well. Ninja Navar is definitely a pretty powerful unit but he does have some pretty insane competition and being a 5 star locked seasonal doesn't make it any better for him. If you do get a copy of him then you could easily run a budget build with Savage Blow and Susparo's Sacred Seal. You basically can trigger Moonbow twice with this kind of build so that's pretty much what his base kit is going for. But he could also run Gale Force and uh, triggering Gale Force over the course of 4 attacks could be a bit inconsistent but he doesn't have the highest attack right here so the true damage from Flashing Blade definitely helps with uh, Gale Forcing. 
and also it does give you the special acceleration of course. You could also run Fire Sweep Lance, the same thing which I went with z -Hark. so basically it can be pretty nice for Arena Assault to just chip away these units, and the true damage is definitely going to be really really helpful here for uh, taking on some of the insane units with high defense. Flowing Lance is a really good option for him because it's basically a lull attack defense weapon that has got a solo condition and it's pretty easy to meet and it does stack up with his lull speed defense. You could definitely run a distant counter build like this, especially on the higher merges, this is going to be getting even better. And because of his stat spread and his high speed, he's of course going to be a nice candidate for spurn, close call or repel as the damage reduction skills. Now because he's a lance unit, he can have access to its curtains plus, which is a really really nice gale force weapon. So like I explained before, uh, for a gale force team in ether raids offense, lint force or air force, he could definitely fit as a wings of mercy gale force unit with flashing blade 4 and having its curtains if you do have it. Ninja Banner brings us a fresh theme of seasonal units and these ninja units do have these brave weapons which can enable quad attacks quite easily. Dual Lin is definitely a pretty powerful unit that has got a really nice duo skill and she can be a pretty nice one-off copy actually. But as it is with a lot of the seasonal banners, it's not a must summon banner in my opinion. And especially for free to play players, it does make it a bit tough because there's no sparking in seasonal banners. So there's no guaranteed 5 star unit to be had after 40 summons. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please be sure to share this video with your friends who are thinking of summoning on this banner or building any kind of unit from this banner. I would really appreciate it. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support. And if you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And also be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because YouTube sub boxes, unlike these brave weapons, have got no speed. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.